Hey guys, I just defeated the final boss of the Elden Ring DLC, and I'd like to share the strategy and build that I used. Now keep in mind, I'm currently on New Game Plus 2, and use the timestamps to skip between the build breakdown, as well as the strategy explanation and the boss fight. For the build, I went with my Dragon Communion build. Check out my in-depth Dragon Communion build guide if you want more details on the build. But I'm using two Dragon Communion seals plus the Rock Heart, to get a combined 59% increase to my Dragon Communion incantations. Then I went fully defensive with the Talismans, as this boss is extremely aggressive and has a very little downtime between attacks while hitting very hard. The Crimson Sea Talisman plus one is used to help reduce the amount of flasks we need to use each heal, Crimson Amber Medallion plus three to maximize HP, Halid Drake plus two because the boss does a lot of holy damage in phase two, there is an upgraded version of the Talisman called the Golden Braid that you can use, but I haven't found it yet and it's only 2% better anyway. And then Dragon Crest Great Shield because the boss also deals a bunch of physical damage. In my Wanderer's Physic, I have the Opaline Heart tier for a further increase to my defenses, then the Blood Sucking tier for a 20% increase to all my damage. The HP Drain can actually be detrimental since this is a long fight though. So feel free to use another defensive tier like the Crimson Burst tier for HP regeneration or the Crimson Spill tier for more max HP. For my stats, I have 60 Vigor, 57 Mind, 20 Endurance, 52 Faith, and 99 Arcane. Vigor goes without saying because anything less is psychotic. 57 Mind because the strategy needs as much FP as possible so that we can minimize HP, minimize the amount of blue flasks we use so that we can run more HP flasks. Then the Arcane and Faith are to maximize the incantation scaling of the seal. If you're playing on base new game, you probably are much lower level than me, so for level 150, I would aim for a stat spread similar to what I have shown here. Then the incantation setup is Blessing of the Archery, Golden Val, Veil's Tyranny, Dragonmar, Lord's Divine Fondication, Scarlet Ionia, and Flame Grant Me Strength. I'll explain the purpose of these in the strategy section. And now, for the strategy, before entering the boss arena, buff up with your Blessing of the Archery, Wanderer's Physic, Golden Vow, Flame Grant Me Strength, and Rock Heart. Blessing of the Archery will help mitigate the HP drain of the Blood Sucking tier, but if you aren't using the Blood Sucking tier, the HP restoration of this incantation will still be important to use to reduce the amount of flasks you need to chug. Golden Vow needs no explanation, more damage and defenses. Flame Grant Me Strength is to improve our damage in Phase 1 to get to 2nd Phase faster. After casting these buffs, enter the boss arena, and he should open up with the Corkscrew attack. This is extremely easy to dodge, so dodge it and hit with either Dragonmar or Veil's Tyranny. Veil's Tyranny will do more damage here, but the long recovery time will leave you vulnerable, so it's safer to do a Dragonmar. For the remainder of Phase 1, Dodge and heal as needed, while using Dragon Mar during punish windows as they become available. It's okay if your Dragon Mars aren't perfectly timed, because it has infinite hyper armor once the Dragon Head is formed, but you do want to avoid getting hit as much as you can to preserve your flasks for Phase 2. You should only take two more Dragon Mars after that initial Mar or Tyranny to get to Phase 2. In Phase 2, you will usually lead with the Light of Mikula attack, Use this opportunity to cast Lord's Divine Fortification and a Flask if need be. Once he finishes the attack, he will have a bit of a punish window where he is landing. Use this time to cast Scarlet Aeonia. If everything goes according to plan, Scarlet Rot will apply. But if something goes wrong for whatever reason, look for another punish window to cast it again, and you should definitely get the Rot this time. Having the Scarlet Rot applied is important, since this is a long fight against a boss with high HP. If you don't mind using Spirit Summons for the fight, then use Exekite's Decay instead of Scarlet Aeonia, casting it as your summon holds aggro. This would be better than Aeonia, as Exekite's Decay will do substantially more damage than Aeonia, in addition to the Rot. Once Scarlet Rot is applied, avoid the boss's attacks to the best of your ability while casting Dragon Mark during the safest times to do so. You will more than likely have to trade with him a couple of times, but the Infinite Hyper Armor will allow you to do so as long as you survive. Once his HP is low enough, he will do the Holy Meteor attack, recast Lord's Divine Fortification, heal if need be, then roll to dodge the attack as best as you can. 
you don't dodge all of it, you should still survive thanks to Divine Fortification. After that, assuming the boss is still alive, he will usually follow up into Light of Mikola again. When he does, get directly underneath him, and once he starts landing, cast Bale's Tyranny to finish him off.